Good evening, everyone, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Free Thought Forum. I'm your host for tonight, Jacob, and once again, I'm joined by Doug. Greetings, everyone. We have missed the last couple of episodes. Unfortunately, I've been a little busy. In the last episode, my car decided to break down. Yeah, of course, it's always at the worst possible time. Yeah, yeah. My my car is getting to the point where I. Uh, I, I'm reminded of the scene out of Apollo 13 where Gene Kranz asks, so what do we got up there that's still good? <laughs> yeah. And and Ecom kind of fumbles around a second and says, I'll have to get back to you on that one, Gene. Yeah, it's, it's one of those cars where somebody asks me how old it is, and I just say, old enough to vote. One of those cars. Well, the good thing about that movie in particular was that it was true. It happened. Yeah. Right? And they didn't vary uh, from the, the truth very far. No, it's, a couple times they, like, squashed a couple of different scenes into one just because just yeah. you only had two hours. But, yeah, for the most part, it was uh, it was pretty accurate to what happened. And, and the line I mentioned is really did happen in Mission Control where, yeah. where he asked the Econ, what do we got up there? It's so good. <laughs> but... Um, now, one thing I wanted to make mention of before we get too far is we will probably be winding down the show this month. Uh, we're moving on to other things. Uh, Doug will be moving on to other things at the end of the month. Um, I just got a new job that will probably interfere with the show schedule. And I think we're just time to uh, move on to something else. Uh, you do something so long and... Even if you like doing it at one point, at some point, you just you just have to move on. Yeah, I was 13, 15 years, been doing the same uh, same thing. And you can only bash religion just for so long. Yeah. Know? Well, I mean, it, I think we'll probably be moving to a podcast format, something online yeah. um, in the coming months. It'll, it'll also give us a lot more flexibility. And it'll let me say the things I'd love to say that I can't say on public television. <laughs> yeah, you know what you know what I mean. And uh, uh, also, just uh, for your uh, information, the, uh, the the next show in two weeks, um, I'll be hosting it, and we're going to talk about all these pipe dreams of going to Mars. So it's going to have a little bit of scientific content. Uh, to the thing and start looking at the practicalities and the forecasts uh, from when we'll actually get there from uh, a number of different people, including, uh, you know, astronauts, NASA personnel, and everything else, because there seems to be uh, a lot of confusion. And of course, the, the myth that they're going to terraform Mars uh, <laughs> so we can live there. Yeah, should be should be interesting. I'm kind of curious about things like terraforming a planet. Yeah, how, how practical it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's not practical, but it's, practical may not be the right word, but it could be necessary at one yeah, some point. At some point in time. But the thing is, what? Uh, who's going to pay for it? You know, we're not talking about a, a couple of billion uh, no. dollars. We're talking trillions and trillions of uh, dollars. And maybe someone will wake up and say. Hey, what are you doing with my tax money? Why aren't you uh, resurfacing the roads or right. doing something else? Uh, maybe, cancer. maybe you just need to establish. And uh, anyway, you can discuss it. Then I won't uh, pick yep. on it too much. But like, yeah, like I said, I got a new job. Um, that was kind of an unexpected opportunity that just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Unexpected, but welcome. Yeah, definitely. Um, and of course, if you know a religious person watching would be watching that would be go, oh, that was God, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, ignoring the seven years I had to suffer through my current job, mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that it's still not quite what I major for, for what I majored in. So it was, I could have still gotten better, but I'm definitely definitely excited to start a new opportunity. Uh, I know it's it can be very difficult for people and. I was reading an interesting book recently called The Coming Jobs War, and it was written by someone that heads up the Gallup organization. They conduct all sorts of surveys and yeah, polls. They're, they're probably the, the preeminent uh, yeah. survey group. 
Yeah, and they were saying they were conducting an international survey on what was important to people, and they found the number one answer now is people just want a good job. Yeah. And it's not hard to see why, because you think about how many different things spawn out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about financial stability. It can be your whole social network. You know, unemployed people lose, sometimes lose their whole social network, which kind of drives them further into their problems. And that's, you know, that's not something you think about, how much these things interact with. Well, it, it also has a, a direct uh, effect on uh, uh, crime rate, too. Yeah, that, that's another thing. It's, it's really all interconnected to having a good job for people. And that's, you know, it's, it's got to be a, the, the main priority for years to come. Uh, not just unemployment, but what they also call underemployment. Yeah. Where people are in a part-time job where they need a better job than what they have. And it, it can be difficult. And unfortunately, there's a lot of politicians who don't understand that. And they don't They're understand. Blind to it. Yeah. Or they don't understand what it means to be stuck in a bad job mm -hmm. um and that's one of the things i've been going through in this sort of setting up things for this new job i realize i'm probably asking a few questions that they're just kind of looking at me going what kind of jobs have you been working that you'd be asking something like that mm -hmm. but uh i mean it's just it's it was just a lot of some just a lot of things to think about oh and don't forget ladies and gentlemen that's is it Ooh, this is a live, uh, live phone-in, uh, call-in uh, show, and your numbers should be on the screen that you can uh, call if uh, it's 846-5067, and we welcome any questions, comments, or suggestions. Yeah, but uh, anyway, in the, in the book, there was uh, one interesting chapter, chapter talking about how important it is to have an energetic work environment. And you know, how that can increase pro productivity and even create more spin-off companies in the process. But I, I love the last two last two pages of that chapter because what it essentially boiled down to was, if you put in bad managers, there's no there's no helping you. Mm -hmm. You know that just destroys everything. And that's really what I went through in my current job was just we got a bad manager in, and the workplace morale just went into the trash can but you see a lot of people that they don't recognize that workplace morale plays a major part on productivity yeah oh yeah and and the managers are the the heart of that yeah is they and if if they if they can't if they're not doing their jobs it's like everybody lower than them is like well what are we doing yeah and especially when you have situations like i was in where i was doing my manager's job for them yeah, uh, that's that's that'll that'll kill workplace morale. But if you've got thing where you have good managers, and if most of your managers were promoted from lower levels in the company, you know, you see your coworker get promoted, you think, well, maybe I can do it too. Yeah. So I mean, I think that's the kind of thing that a lot of people don't think about when they think about you know issues with jobs, and, and that's one of the things I liked about the book was they really discussed about how many different things are interconnected that you may not think about or think about to that degree. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a lot of things I hated about the book, too, because there was one sec the, the opening of the book was essentially saying if the Chinese economy grows to larger than the United States, he, cl he said it would be the end of democracy, which I'm like, really? Well. Yeah, it's like it was, it was that kind of over-the-top um, portion and I, I kind of laughed when he said and the, uh, when he said when he wrote actually wrote well then the United States won't be able to how do you put that something like you know you know out, sort of export our morality to other countries and I'm like really yeah yeah you don't you don't want to get into that go down to that road but no. but I mean it, it was it was kind of give or take about what it had but it's you know, I can't say I've ever agreed, picked up a book and completely agreed with what it had to say. You know, yeah, it, unless you wrote the book. <laughs> yeah. Well, even then, I mean, yeah. my you opinions you change your mind. Yeah, yeah, my opinions are changing all the time, and and I think it's, uh, and that's the thing with some of these books is 
it's fine to disagree with them. Just figure out why you disagree with it. Yeah. Not just, ah, I don't like it, but usually when I, I disagree with something, I can, I can kind of figure out why. But it's still, it's still good to have your view challenged so you can <clears throat> sort of understand why you disagree, even if it's something, you, especially if it's not something you really thought about too much before. But um, another thing I want to mention, uh, upcoming events. Uh, this weekend is Red Lion. It'll be our last, uh, our last table of the season. Uh, we usually we're going to be skipping the pumpkin fest this uh, this year due to scheduling conflicts. Um, that, that was a great uh, tabling event, the the pumpkin fest. Yeah, yeah. Just unfortunately, there's a couple of events we're we're just not able to do this year. Uh, hopefully, next year we'll uh, we'll get out to a few more. I kind of have some hope to uh, make some upgrades to the table, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it's 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 important to stay, you know just stay out there and keep getting the message out. Uh, well, I mean, the the, the more uh, that we sort of uh, it, it's going to sound dirty, but expose ourselves to the uh, the, the normal public, uh, it, yeah. you know, and they see that you know we're just natural people in uh, in this booth that happens to say Pennsylvania non-believers. Uh, on the thing, and you start talking about, uh, you know, taxes, uh, the way the government's being run, the, the the condition of our roads and our infrastructure, and they find out that just like them, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's that's the important part. And I and I thought it was interesting. Like I, I kind of go back to this a couple of times when I wrote a uh, a letter to the editor a couple of years ago. I was. Um, Oh yeah, there's one of our boobs. Yeah, I was I was kind of I was kind of expecting a lot of backlash, but it was just all positive feedback mm -hmm. when defending the atheist position. So it's just it, it, you'd be surprised sometimes. Uh, another thing we got coming up in October is our conference. There's still tickets available. Uh, we got a great lineup, including uh, American atheist president David Silverman. Uh, the uh, friendly atheist uh, Hemet Meta and uh, the the science babe Giovanna Dietremont. So it's and many many more. You can check out atheistpa.org to uh, check out our tickets and there's still some available. I think even the P tickets available still. Yeah, we, we all, oh yeah we also have Lawrence Krauss, uh, a famous astrophysicist. Uh, and he's also been doing a lot more uh, religious debates lately. Uh, he's, it's, it's interesting to see. He used to be opposed <laughs> to doing that, but it seems like more and more he, he's finding it unavoidable. Oh, there he is, Mr. Silverman. Yes. Yeah. Like uh, you notice he didn't have any red eyes, though. Yeah. Yeah, um, but also we're running the, uh, once again, we're running the food drive this year, Atheist Vice Hunger. Uh, trying to work our goal is ten thousand dollars. We've been a bit sluggish here early on, but but hopefully we can get some uh, momentum going on that through August and September. Uh, last last uh, conference we raised is over seven thousand dollars to package meals for food banks. So hopefully we're we're hoping to get up to to uh, ten thousand dollars this year. It's still a bit of a ways off, but uh, hopefully we get there little by little. Yeah. But. Uh, one of the main things I wanted to talk about is uh, a, a big debacle that happened over the last couple of weeks with the Ark Encounter project from uh, Answers in Genesis. Um, as you may have known, this thing was has been a legal issue from the very start of what they've been trying to do. And what I mentioned last time I was on is they were trying to fight paying a 50 cents per ticket safety fee which was going to help uh, fund the local emergency response teams. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I found this out later was this wasn't for upgrades down the line. This was for the increased staffing they put into effect right now. Yeah. Where they need, they need to have the staff on hand to be able to handle emergency at the park. So they had the Ark Encounter pay, paying for most of it. Although, as I would kind of said a couple times, it's not really them paying it. You just tack on an extra 50 cents to your ticket price. 
Yeah. It's probably not going to affect your attendance at all. And really, I mean, that's when you go to it. No, no, that's more of a cost anyway. No. No, it's, it's, it's only a fraction of the, of the admission price. And, you know, if you go to any tourist attraction or anything, you lo if you look at the receipt, they'll have base costs, taxes, and then fees. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, that's typical. It's not really, like, whenever you tax a business, it's almost never the business paying the tax. It's always us. But they, they went to great lengths to try to stop from paying it. They, they tried to claim because they were a ministry, they shouldn't pay it, even though... Mm -hmm their organization is technically a, a for-profit tourist attraction, so no, they can't claim that. And they really went, they really went a couple steps too far when, to try to avoid paying it, they sold the land to an affiliate nonprofit for $10. Oh, that's sneaky. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think they, I think they may have overpaid, but. Yeah, they, they but, should run for political office. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, the FFRF sent a reminder to the local governments, like, look, you're, all the tax incentives are tied into them being a for-profit entity. Mm -hmm. So the local governments decided to yank all the tax incentives <coughs> since they were selling off the nonprofit. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's questionable whether the move was even legal in the first place. Because when you have a tourist attraction that's taking government benefits, you actually need approval to sell it. To essentially to avoid to to stop people from doing this very thing. And I and I, I give the 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 credit to these local governments for finally standing up to all this nonsense. And it can be a difficult thing to do because they'll try to claim religious persecution here. Yeah. And. And that's one thing that Seth Andrews, the thinking, uh, who runs the Thinking Atheist, um, he was talking about some of the way that Christian organizations will plagiarize brands and like logos from mainstream corporations, and mainstream corporations know it's going on, but they don't sue because they don't want to get boycotted. Yeah, and it's it's and they and they don't want to spend the money on, on lawyers. And yeah, there's well, there's some of that, but I think most of it is they don't they don't want to get threatened with a boycott for doing what's legally their the legal right mm -hmm. to do. So I think ans the the answers in answers in Genesis finally did um, did go back on that, and the 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 place is now a a um, a for profit entity again, and they're paying taxes on it. But it's still just like the lengths they went through just to avoid a, a couple of taxes is just really has me questioning a lot of things about their integrity. You know, and I didn't, I maybe had more of a too high of an opinion of them to begin with. But well, I, when I say high, I don't mean yeah. that high. But I'm, I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like maybe they're just honestly mistaken. Mm hmm. They're just honestly lying. <laughs> yeah, but this this whole this whole project, start to finish, they've been they've been lying. They've been having trying to have it both ways, and unless their lawyers are just that incompetent that they, they wouldn't tell them like, okay, no, you can't do this. No, you're going to get into trouble if you do this. You know, unless they've got just incompetent lawyers, they have to know they're lying about about setting up this park because the whole time as i said they've been trying to have it both ways you know if they've if there's a benefit to be had as a for-profit entity they're like okay we're a for-profit entity and they'll try to give secular reasons why they should be there mm -hmm. but then they'll also try to reap the benefits of being a non-profit mostly in their discriminatory hiring practices and trying to hide from taxes oh yeah i mean you you roll butter all but have to get down on your knees and swear uh, that yeah. you b believe in Jesus and uh, uh, God, and you never ever say anything bad about the uh, the organization. Right. There, there, there's there's various things like that. You have to sign their statement of faith. So it's it's very very much illegal what they've done. 
left and right, and the local governments have been essentially bending over backwards to try to put them in, and they're still trying to screw the government, the local governments, out of tax money that they just, that they're is very much warranted. And what was really promised by the Ark Encounter project to begin with, and it's just not doing it. So it's just. It's really it's really interesting to see how this has progressed since thinking maybe maybe this is the thing that finally takes them down is they they've been exposed for what they're trying to do. Um, it kind of reminds me of the the Kissmiller versus Dover trial, where there were certain points where in, in other cases where the intelligent design sign didn't go quite far enough for them to say aha no you're doing doing that but. Yeah. In the Dover trial, they were much more upfront about that they were doing, which allowed them to be exposed for, for that, and allowed them to really fight a lawsuit and win, even with a conservative Christian judge presiding over it. And I think, hopefully, people will start to get the mess, the idea of it now. But um, yeah, but don't forget, uh, a lot of. Uh, religious people never get the message right but uh, I think the point is just enough can we get just enough people to, to understand it yeah to you ask know, questions yeah yeah and, and, and like th I get into that with some political discussions too where I'm like where they say well how many people are gonna buy into that and I'm looking like, I look at them and go can you get 51% of the people to buy into that mm hmm that's all you need start winning elections or Enough or enough just to to steer a couple people various ways and no way, yeah, yeah, and, and um, I uh, uh, and I'm not saying it's like one side or the other. Sometimes I I I very much prefer a moderate view. You know, it's like with everything going on with the Affordable Care Act, I'm like, hopefully now they'll kick the extremists out of the room, get the moderates together, and. Get it, and get say, it. okay, this is something that'll work for everyone, uh, eighty percent of the time. So. Right, right. There, yeah, there's there's things like that, and so it's, yeah. So it's just hopefully you'll get just enough people changing their minds. Um, but I, somebody, uh, one of the podcasts I like to listen to is called The Scathing Atheist, mm -hmm. where. Uh, they do they have three guys three pretty funny guys one's they have like one guy's kind of a goofy comedian the other guy's more of a serious one and mm -hmm. then the host no illusion is a very is very sarcastic humor yeah so it's it's a very good combo of it but they were they were discussing this and they were saying well what would you do like if the, if the park goes bankrupt you know could you imagine that sheriff sale <laughs> Yeah, and they they were talking about well, what would what would we do if we could get the park? And one one of the, the the catchphrases on the show is like, well, if I had crazy billionaire money, I would do this. And it's usually, yeah. well, they do another podcast where they uh, they make fun of Christian movies, and they were thinking, you know, if I had crazy billionaire money, I would remake this movie, only change this one scene to be even more ridiculous. Yeah. But they they were talking about well what would we, what would we do with the Ark Encounter, and uh, they had a sketch where like basically making the park even sillier than it is. I'd and probably be laughing most of the uh, time going through. Yeah, where they show like what the what the what the Ark would actually have to be to to work, and <laughs> and during the sketch, the one guy says, uh, and like the one guy is playing the role of the tour guide, yep. and another guy is like a as a tourist and he's like at one point the tourist guy is like oh god and someone goes hey who said oh god blasphemy you get a free t-shirt <laughs> and i'm like these give these people money give these the I, I want world. them to have the money to take over this and really show what you could do with it i mean could you imagine selling all the souls with fake animals and fake animal noises and the yeah. various plaques and I do, do they have uh, we've got dinosaurs in, in there? Probably. Yeah. It's a creation. It's a creationist a park. Of course, yeah. they're going to have dinosaurs everywhere. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe even Barney Rubble. Oh what? Maybe even Barney Rubble. Yeah. Just, yeah. 
Of the Flintstones. <laughs> yeah, I've, I actually saw another uh, atheist YouTuber did a animated short with Ken Ham, and his cell phone goes off, and it's the Flintstone theme song. Oh yeah, there's oh, the. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, there's the odd. That's a dinosaur. Yeah, it's it's, it's various dinosaurs in the park, and you know, I I know I know uh, Seth Andrews likes to bring up the Creation Museum when where they have a dinosaur, a Velociraptor, a couple feet away from a penguin. <laughs> yeah, it's just okay. <laughs> and it, well, I mean, it's always funny to to, to see them. Uh, to see them deal, have to deal with Garden of Eden stuff, because then the, you have to realize, oh, they were naked, so we have to get all these strategically placed objects in the way. Yes. Yeah, so it's like, who who sets those up? Is is it you know, someone who's like, ah, oh, I can't look at this. <laughs> yeah, put it into the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put I, a fig leaf on that. <laughs> does it come with fig leaves? Does it come with it? No. <laughs> yeah, it's like I yeah, uh, that would be. Something you just you got you gotta wonder sometimes. Yeah. Some of the weird things I wonder about, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye on it um, to see where it goes from here. I don't know. Maybe maybe as an organization we can take up a collection to try and buy it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or, maybe or, or maybe get one of the the stalls and put up one of our booths. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. See, yeah. even atheists were around in the old, good old days. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's should, it's always fun to. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the uh, it doesn't mess up the local economies too much. Mm -hmm. But uh, hopefully, this will be the monument to stupidity as to where hopefully people can learn their lesson. Do, do you think that the uh, the people of that area uh, actually e uh, expected to uh, make a like a, a financial uh, windfall, as it was. Um, well, they they were expecting the they 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 were expecting there to be a better better economic impact on the local region. Which has so far, as far as I've read, hasn't really occurred. You know, they, the local businesses haven't seen any increase, any significant increases in their in their sales. So it's <coughs> really hasn't been the big economic impact that they had promised. Which is, I think, part of the reason they're starting to tax them a little more is because they're not seeing the, that that increase that they they were supposed to get. When they first started, did they promise, uh, you know, the, 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 the township, the area, that they were going to see a, uh, a rise in their economy because of the tourists and uh, everything? I mean, was that even... That they were going to put what in? That they were going to see um, a, an increase uh, in their economy, yeah, yeah, their, their income, and so yeah, that kind of, that kind of stuff was being promised, or at least, if if not promised, it was they were saying, well, you should you should give us money because we'll you know you'll get it back through economic increases, you know, things like that, yeah, where they really <laughs> haven't seen any of that economic development that they wanted, and. It's only going to get worse over the next couple of years as the attendance for the park is going to start to drop off. And I wonder how many uh, religious people attend, go there, uh, as opposed to uh, the the people that visit it for a good laugh. Oh, you know, I I sometimes wonder that too. I'm I'm sure. The opening couple weekend, it a couple weekends, it was a lot of atheists just seeing it ironically, or there to protest it, or things like that. But yeah, on the screen right now yeah. is uh, it's uh, this was from a TV local TV station. It says community says Ark Park's economic promise falls short. And yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a local TV station to the Ark. 
Interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's even <laughs> reported locally that so it's not one of those mainstream fake news medias that they try to scare you about. It's like local local people are saying this where it's just we're not they're not seeing what they they were supposed to get and they're not the i don't think they're going to match their own attendance projections yeah i mean they're probably going to be a little better than what um outside sources have projected although mm -hmm. they're more pro those projections were probably deliberately conservative but it, it really it really hasn't met any of the things that they've promised and you i mean i would expect this place to be bankrupt in a couple of years really um, um well, we can hope unless they can turn it uh into uh, like a disneyland you know put, put rides inside hey you know ride the dinosaur inside the uh the ark yeah <laughs> yes it uh yeah i mean i don't know i don't know where they'll go from here but I know the uh, the FFRF has been all over it, making sure, trying to keep the uh, keep tabs on all the violations piling up. And well, I think another thing is they wanted to attract uh, some of the local schools to come and attend, but the FFRF has been very much proactive in not letting that happen, like not letting even a foot in the door for that to happen. So hopefully that will continue and then. This will uh, this will eventually blow up in their face. Yeah. Uh, but another thing that's uh, been going on recently is the White House has been holding Bible studies on taxpayer time. No, um, no. Yeah, and it's no, no. and it's there's also some worries about whether or not they've been coercing st staffers to go. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's, it's one thing about Trump is he knows the evangelical quote carried him, yeah. so he's he's pandering to them hardcore, even though he, you know he doesn't really care. Yeah, it's religion was never big with him before he ran for president. Yeah. It's clear he's pretty clueless on it. He seems to stand for everything that Christians shouldn't be. And yet they're all supporting him because he's he's just sitting there doing pandering stuff like this. Well, he's an opportunist. Yeah, he really is. I mean, he, he sees something uh, there, and he goes, "Well, maybe I should grab hold of that." In yeah. Case. Yeah, but um, I mean, there have been actually several secular organizations that have been requesting similar meetings, mm -hmm. like similar to the Bible study. I mean, it's, <coughs> and I should make note here: it's not they're not saying. Oh, don't have the Bible study. It's more like have it on your own time. Yeah, I mean, that's or, or include us with it. Uh, right, right, and that's that's the thing. It's it's. But when you start putting it on taxpayer time, that's when we uh, we we raise a hand in objection. You know, kind of like a couple of years ago, when the mayor of Harrisburg went to a church to do a prayer service yeah. in the middle of the day when she should have been working. Yeah, and figured that she could solve all of Harrisburg's uh, problems uh, by praying, right. even the budget. Yeah, uh, however that was supposed to work. But yeah, this is, uh, this is an issue. And um, Andrew Seidel, who was a, uh, who's a FFRF lawyer, uh, was on Fox News to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think you can imagine how that went. But there was uh, and there, so they had somebody trying to deb debate him about it, and Andrew Seidel really didn't um, didn't pull any punches. He said, and I quote, "It can't be considered proper or in keeping with American values for government officials to get together on taxpayer time to study a book that condones slavery and the subjugation of women and the internal torture and torment of people who don't believe like you." So even if it doesn't violate con the Constitution directly, it certainly violates the core principles of American government and the separation the separation of church and state. And the the, the person they had him even the person the host was kind of like wow, yeah. Uh, and the person the person they were debating he was debating against really gave a big non-answer, which was something along the lines of. Well, I hope they study it and gain its wisdom, or you know, 
vague nonsense like that. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's definitely concerning, especially since the, um, I think the person who leads the Bible study is extremely sexist. You know, very, oh, yeah? it's, he said, essentially said that mothers shouldn't even run for office or things like that. That is kind of sexist. Yeah. Especially the way, you know, the, the Trump administration and Trump himself has not exactly been a friend to women over the years, even though he insists he is. But it, it's hard to believe when you, when you see some of the comments that he's made uh, and you say, and some of the things he's done, it's like, this guy has got to be sexist. Oh, he is. He is. And you can find... You can find so many clips and comments, and uh, and then he gets gets up in a debate without a hint of shame and says, "Nobody has more respect for women than I do." Yeah, a chauvinist pig. I'm like, <laughs> and uh, there's so many people I've seen like that where um, someone running for governor it was talking about getting rid of all these environmental regulations and drilling for more <coughs> oil and gas. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of that, that, he stops and says, you know, I, I understand your concern. And he says, I might be the biggest environmentalist there is. <laughs> really? Re yeah. Really? Okay, then... Who told you that? <laughs> even though earlier he said he thought climate, <laughs> he thought global warming was caused by body heat. It's like, oh. But unfortunately, too many people buy into that where they'll say, you know, w you know we are this. But their actions don't show any of that. Um, you know, it's like you, you have the far, you know, the conservative Christians who would say, we are pro-family. Okay, how are you pro-family? You oppose health care, higher wages, but, and I could go down the list of all the things they oppose that would help working families. And apparently it just, what, pro-family means being anti-gay? Is that all there is to it? Seems to be, yeah. It's just they spout it all the time. Yeah, and, and that's no, it's it's not. It's it's that's just being anti-gay. That's not being pro-family. Mm -hmm. um, because because actually that is that can be turned into anti-family. <coughs> mm -hmm. Because so many, you know, if you look in some of the more conservative areas, a good chunk of the homeless po population are gay teenagers who've been kicked out of their homes by the parents <laughs> right know. right so it, it that's one that, that anti-gay rhetoric can actually kill, hurt families not it doesn't help them and the only way that you can say that and, and that's the only th way that you can really say that that being more tolerant of LGBT community is de destroying the families is not it's not on the LGBT people it's on the people who just completely reject anybody, even their own family, That's who might slightly be slightly different. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's putting it's really putting the blame on the wrong people. Which well, I, I think a, a lot of it uh, is that uh, people that object to all of this, all they see is the sex part of it. Yeah. You know, they they don't think of uh, uh, anyone that's uh, gay as actually being in love with a, uh, a right. person of their own. They says all they want is just that sex, and right. that's what they're doing it for—that dirty sex. Yeah, there was there was actually a good uh, a good talk from Daryl Ray, and you know he loves to talk about sex all the time. Uh, but he was talking about the myth of sex addiction mm -hmm. um, and how there's so many religious organizations trying to push it like it's actually a thing, even though the um, the Professional Psychiatric Association has come out and refused to recognize it as such. And one of the things he was talking about, all the articles and things coming out of religious universities and he's like, you know, man, and, and, and partway through, he goes, man, religious people are obsessed with sex. He goes, 
you can't you can't pin that on atheists. We're yeah. It's like we, you know people talk about sex and we're like, hey, whatever, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Just just be as long as it's consensual and not coerced. And don't, don't force it on me and. Uh, yeah, what you, what you what you do is your own business, and that's that's really the way I am about it. And I'm like, but when you when you start saying you know telling people how to conduct it, it's you know when it can become quite get imaging. Yeah, and uh, also the, the the message that they try to uh, impart on other people. Yeah. To try and change them, and I think they kind of stretch the uh, uh, the truth and and their credibility. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's it's sometimes you, you see sometimes it's really the the shame the shaming that goes on around the action is the actual harm rather than anything to do with the action itself. Yeah, you know if you if you start to feel shame about this, then you, it becomes self destructive. You you start to self destruct just over trying to deal with the shame, not necessarily a, a direct consequence of the act itself or the actions itself. And I want to tell a story, but I know I can't say it on public television. Well, I've got a little thing then. Uh, it's, a, it's a quote from Lawrence Krauss, who's going to be at our conference uh, come October. And it's my favorite one. It's one I have on my desktop. It says, science is trying to find the secrets of the universe. Religions are debating what you can and cannot do with your genitalia. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, essentially. So that, that might be that's, that's this, the in, the significance of his quote. It may not be an exact one. I don't have a copy in front of me, but it's science goes for the universe, religions go for you can't do that. Right. Yeah, and I, I know Christopher Hitchens um, made a com a couple comments like that. Um, again, I can't repeat them on public television, <laughs> but they they were they were great. Where he's like. You know, he goes all this, you know, just so the Pope can tell us not to do something. And, uh, it, it really is the case, and it's, well, and it's, you know, it's, and it's, and it's so, and it's so counterproductive too. So I think, um, so I mean, that's that's one of the things is whenever someone tries to apply a label to themselves it's always good to ask well why do you think that label fits you yeah because so many times and that's why I, I try to get away from labels to some degree because people will just slap them around or try to shove it into a box to some degree when I would prefer to say what I stand for and whatever you want to label with me with is up to you but <coughs> it's like I'm not I'm not gonna apply that label to myself mm-hmm um, but it's um, it should be uh, well I mean I'll give you an example of the way uh, people think uh, way back several centuries ago um, when I, I joined the army and I was in uh, <laughs> went down to Fort Dix New Jersey okay and uh, when you were down there you had to run everywhere. You know, there was no walking. You had to uh, at least jog. And I had a, a, a tendency when I uh, w was jogging or, uh, or walking, uh, I'd have limp wrists, you know. And, uh, 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 oh and uh, th this guy that I'd, I'd met down there that was kind of nice, he says, uh, hey, Doug, he says, are you gay? And I go, well, hell no, why do, you, why do you ask? He says, because you run like you're gay. He says, um, you really should do something about that if you don't want to get uh, beaten up or have a, a blanket party. And I, I took him very seriously. Uh, on that, and all of a sudden now it's uh, going to be the the, the, the macho uh, walk or jog, you know, fist, oh yes, yes. But people wanting uh, to judge you by the way you run, the position of your hands, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that really is petty. 
And uh, the time when I went in, which was uh, like 1962, uh, th th there was still a lot of uh, sexual and, uh, and gay uh, rhetoric about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if people thought that you were gay, they'd say, well, uh, you know, he's, he's just like uh, uh, everyone else. No, they want to beat you up. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a bit of that. There's a lot of that still going on today. Yeah. Um, and you still have a long way to go on that. And I know it's, I, I, you know, I don't know what the deal is where people insist on just, like men insist that it's being macho and every other man be macho as well. Mm -hmm. And that was something I had to contend with growing up because I was never comfortable with that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, you know, I don't own a truck. I don't. <laughs> You know, I don't have. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, never wanted to really own a truck. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like all my brothers have trucks, and yeah. I'm like, and you can tell with a couple of them, it's just a fashion statement. It's not. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to pay for the gas on that thing, and I don't need it. Or you know, muscle shirts and stuff, and like we we take pictures together, and everybody would be like, oh, and you look at me, and I just look so awkward doing it. Yeah. And it's just, you know, and that's really, as I, I've, I've gone further, it's just realized to accept people for how they are. It, it just doesn't matter to me anymore. Yeah. Well, th while I was in the uh, army, uh, two of my best friends, uh, one was gay and the other was black. Okay. And, and you know... People would say to me, oh, well, why the hell do you uh, want to hang around with those N-words, uh, you know? And I go, because this guy is, was nice to me. I said he was polite. I said, one day, I said, I was getting ready to go in the barracks. I said, and what did he do? I said, he grabbed uh, uh, the door, and I right, automatically thought, that son of a bitch is going to get in in front of me. Like that, and he just opened the door and says, after you, which was quite unexpected. I just said, thank you, thank you very much. Right. And a, a month later, I sort of did the same thing going into the chow hall. And it's surprising the, uh, the, the amount of grief that you get from other people uh, just because I treated him, uh, you know, like a person. Yeah, I know that goes where yeah, they, they talk about, yeah, sometimes you talk, they talk about, well, I kind of lost my train of thought. But, yeah, sometimes it's like just just treat other people decently. That's that's all we ask. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes they'll say, well, you know, gentlemen should hold the door open for women. And I'm like, shouldn't they also hold the door open for men if they've got their hands full or yeah, just out of politeness? Exactly. You know, and women can't decide to open a door for a man either yeah uh, it's just it's just one of those things it's like you you force these things on people and there there's really no good when you take a step back for a second and look at them objectively mm -hmm. there's no really good reason to stick to that well i mean you you all you got to do is do random acts of kindness right for no reason uh whatsoever other than it I, felt right at the time. Yeah, and just we we all we, we all have enough difficulty getting through every day. Let's make it a little happier for people. Yeah. And I think that's one of the one of the advantages of a secular worldview is you <coughs> you don't just take all of these values and just say, okay, that's what I'm going to do, and not even think mm -hmm. about them. You know, in a secular worldview, you have to be actively engaged with what are your values. And understand mm -hmm. why you can do things. You should do things the way you do, and that lets you think out of the box and be a little bit more flexible with what you think. Of course, you know the the religious right would always say, "Oh, that's going to lead to moral degradation." You know, moral degrade, but not really. I mean, it, it yeah, it it can make you think about, you know, just how how do you get day to day, and, and you know, how can you make the world a better place. For others, and in turn, make it a better place for yourself. Yeah, you can't always point the uh, finger at someone else and say, "Hey, what have you done 
lately to make the the world a better place. You have to ask yourself, you know, yeah. what have I done? Yeah, and, and it's kind of funny when you when you talk about some of the people, some of the people who have come out of of bad situations that they start yelling. So you guys, sometimes I have to remember when I'm I'm yelling at other people about things. Mm -hmm. What I'm really doing is yelling at myself from the past. Yeah. And, you know, I know I look at myself 10 years ago and going, what was I doing? Oh, you yeah. Know, you know, when I really wasn't thinking about any of this in, in any sort of nuanced way, where now, I mean, I, I'm not saying, oh, it's all behind me, because I, I, mm -hmm. I still have things I've got to work on, but it's, it's one of those things about being actively engaged in it. And, and understanding, trying to d develop a deeper understanding. Well, I've, uh, I've looked uh, back uh, at things that I have uh, wrote, say, uh, 20, 30 years ago, and I'm go who the hell yeah. wrote that? Oh, I yeah. Go, oh, it was me. Yeah. I surely couldn't have thought like that, but then you look back and you go, Oh yeah. Yeah, but, but so you, you I think the idea is to undergo constant positive change. Yeah. And I think some of that is it's not it is important to not forget where you came from. Mhm. Mm Cuz I've I've done that too where I've gotten in discussions with people where they say something that would be racist or sexist. Mhm. Mm and I I look at what they said and go, okay, I know they don't think that's as horrible as it really is. Mm -hmm. And I try to write a very toned response to it. Like, what, what would have convinced me that that was wrong? And uh, sometimes when I'm writing the response, I'm like, <coughs> I hope some of my more progressive friends don't read this because they're going to wonder what's wrong with me. Yeah. But what I'm trying to do is kind of meet them out there and say... You know, I understand why you feel that way, but it's this is why it's wrong. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of that times I can end up writing a hundred, a thousand word essays on yeah. to respond to one sentence. It's just trying to make sure they understand, you know, the ins and outs of it without being accusative, without being, you know, oh, you, what's wrong with you? You know, blah blah blah. I don't want to, I don't want to turn people off, yeah. and. Yeah, that's why I'm saying is, you know, don't forget where you came from if you've made any improvements. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to read just a, a, a little comment from a reader of uh, the York Sunday News in the uh, opinion uh, section uh, of it. It's, you know, it's letters to the editor. This is uh, your opinions. <laughs> and it says, Atheists are succeeding in destroying us. The disunity in our country today is disturbing. Blatant disrespect of the law, our president, and our country. The news is full of hateful protests and vulgar actions such as we've never witnessed before. Many are questioning how our nation has gotten uh, to this place, and it's easy to understand if you look at the facts. Atheists those rotten atheists uh, in America are enjoying the spoils of years of planning. They were successful beyond their wildest dreams back in 1947 when they infiltrated the Supreme Court and made a new law twisting the meaning of separation of church and state to, rem uh, to mean removing God from our government and schools like that. Anyone who has studied true American history has to realize that this was the greatest ho hoax ever perpetrated on our country. The stage was set so that in the early 1960s, the Bible and the prayers were removed from our public schools, and Madeleine Murray O'Hare, a notorious atheist, is largely credited with this accomplishment. The ingredients that had given this country the most freedom 
opportunity and prosperity of any nation in all of history was removed. God and Jesus Christ were no longer welcome in our public schools. Now, that's only half uh, of what it wrote. It was a, a Rosemary Fike in Hanover. Well, of course, we strongly disagree yeah. uh, uh, with that. Um, so she, she literally said, change the meaning of separation in church of state to mean get religion out of government. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did you even read that sentence? Yeah. yeah. Read it before you uh, send it on. Yeah. yeah. yeah just, just read it out loud. You'll hear it. Yeah. And that's and you know God and Jesus are still allowed in schools. <laughs> just the teacher can't force kids to do it. Yeah. And they can I pray before they get to school. They can pray in uh, in the um, playground. Yeah. They can uh, they can make a silent prayer. Oh God, please let me pass this test, and even though I haven't studied. <laughs> or you could have. I mean, and evangelicals would understand it. The second if they got into a Catholic heavy area, mm -hmm. and they were starting to force your kids to cross themselves and say a prayer to Mary. Yeah. I mean, I think that would that would get them. You know. Really, really endorsing this view of separation of church and state right away. Well, it's, it's one other thing that she, uh, she says here. Today, we have masses of spiritually uneducated people who are blinded to the truth and are following Satan like sheep to the slaughter. As we see, uneducated, but yeah, yeah. We're deliberately following Satan. Okay. Yeah, and it's I impossible to govern a country uh, c correctly without God and the Bible. No, I would say it's impossible if you don't have the Constitution of the United States. Yeah. And it, mm -hmm. I, I thought uh, I heard someone once really hit the nail on the head when he said. If the Bible had anything to inf do with influencing our form of government, it was essentially to show us how not to do it. I mean, if yeah, you look at a good point, you know, so many of the amendments and so many of our laws are essentially just at it's complete odds with what the Bible has to say. Of course, they'll cherry pick one or two, like "Thou shalt not kill." See, see, that's it. You know. Mm -hmm. Literally, I've gotten people to argue that just because that one sentence is in the Bible, um, all of a sudden it's the great, the whole start to finish, even though the verse, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, has caused way more deaths than you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's... And, you know, I, th I would encourage anybody who reads this paper to respond to that. You know, there were... Yeah. Um, there, there, were, there are so many times when, you know, if, if you don't have time to do a blog or do serious writing, just pick a letter to the editor at some point and respond to it. Yeah. There's, there's all sorts of ways for a little activism. Don't forget, probably our uh, show um, will not be on, well, will be on in two weeks, but uh, then we'll probably uh, be taking uh, a break uh, while we sort of recoup, we thank you all for uh, for tuning in these past 15, 20 years or however long it was, but it's a long time. And uh, Jacob and I have enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun, but uh, it's time to move on to the next thing. Um, but uh, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, well, so see you around. Yeah. Bye bye. Ta ta for now. Right. TTFN.